Hey everyone, it's Sam Kai here from Enterprise DNA. I, I want to do just a short and sweet tutorial here, just around if statements in Power BI. I'm sitting just here in the for on the Enterprise DNA um, support forum. So this is where members are able to ask questions and get assistance. And I've had a couple of instances where uh, new users mainly to to uh, Power BI and especially DAX get a little bit uh, caught up with old Excel habits and utilizing multiple if statements, okay? And so I wanna just show you a better way and then also how you can extend this even further um, and um, make things, uh, build a little bit of additional complexity into your, um, in, into ways that you can solve for um, things that require this sort of if type logic inside of Power BI. So some of you who, um, you know, especially if you've come from an Excel background, which is very, very common, obviously. Um, that's where the majority of Power BI users uh, mostly mostly start from, um, including myself, once upon a time. Um, is that, you know, you're so used to writing these really complex if statements, right? Where you've got, you know, multiple pieces of logic all nested into each other. But in Power BI, there is actually a much better way to write this out, to actually um, much simpler and sort of easier to understand way to actually write this out in in DAX, right? And so, um, so what I originally came up with here, well, the, the the techniques the technique to use is switch true logic. And so I've created a video um, about this particular technique many many uh, like a, a couple of times now. Actually, we we almost had we had a. Um, uh, a couple of workshops on it as well historically but basically what the switch true logic enables you to do is it enables you to do just like what you can do with an if statement sort of um, feed in particular results based on if something evaluates to true or false so just like and just like an if statement but it's a much much cleaner way to write anything that sort of requires that in this particular video here, which you can actually watch, um, if you want to go to this link, you can also search for it on YouTube. Uh, it's at the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Um, the link will be placed in, in the, the description of this particular video, so you will be able to navigate back to this if you want. Um, but basically what you can do is you can very easily um, write out the logic, so the true, the true or false logic. So all you've got to do is write... You know, if something equals something, then I want it to equal this. And the, and the cool thing about it is that you can actually um, have what it equals to to be a, a very variable. It can be, say, just like a text. Um, uh, it can be a number. It can be a measure even. It can actually, you can feed in measures um, even into, into this particular syntax, okay? And I'll just update this particular formatting so we can actually see how um, how this looks okay and so and, and I wanted to tell you a little way you can extend this as well so this is this is the the sort of format that you want right you want um, a name of the measure and then you want switch and then you want true st straight after it and then you want to place your logic in here that you want to test for true or false right so, but what you can also do is you can use these simple ampersands, ampersands to have multiple evaluations happen at every single row. So, in this particular example, this was from one of our members, Bronwyn. Um, you know, it was pretty, a, a pretty recent request, um, which layered on top of a, a more historic one. So, it's great to see um, that they that you know, you've been, members are, are sort of seeing historical. Um, solutions and then building on top of it so that's how we're building out our knowledge base here within the forum but what we uh, what we're doing here is we've got multiple evaluations at every single row here so we're saying is this equal to new and does this particular um, column equal to design and then if it does then then produce the result. okay and that's I can just use that with a very very simple double ampersand All right and so and you can go all the way down, and then this one here is going to be your alternative result. So if none of these evaluate to true, well, then we want to return this. But what happens in the evaluation stage here is the switch just goes, does this equal to true? No. Then does this equal to true? No. Does this equal to, to true, the, this particular logic here? Yes. Well, then this is going to be the result that, that is returned. Okay? So this is just a far superior way to do right, create any sort of logic um, that you would historically have done 
with nested if statements. It's so much cleaner and it's so much easier to have understand when someone is sort of picking it up or you're, you're coming back to it and you need to revise it. Now, the last thing is, you can, this is totally variable. I want to reiterate that point. You can actually feed in measures, right? And this is how you can create a dynamic singular measure that can return results of many me measures because you can evaluate something and then return a measure here, return a measure here, return a measure here, or some sort of logical or additional calculation in here. I've even had done an example historically where, um, a quite advanced example, where I had... Um, a switch measure which I branched out into another switch measure. So my switch was was evaluating at each different row. Then if it evaluated the true, it, it, a measure was here and then it went down into that measure and it evaluated another switch statement within that measure. And so you can actually um, get quite tricky with, with, with these sort of things. Um, and But it all is written, I like the way it's written, it's very clean and easy to understand. Okay, so that's all I want to do. I just want to do a quick recap here. This is something that, you know, uh, for, for beginners especially, this is just a really simple way to, um, you know, introduce a, a better way, you know, where DAX is actually better. It provides a better solution than what you historically would have done um, with an Excel. Okay, got to round off there. Thanks a lot. Uh, if you got something out of this video, I really appreciate a like on it as always. And um, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Okay, all the best.